everyone, welcome back to my statistics class. So today we'll talk about mean and the standard deviation. So the differences between one value in the data set and the mean is referred as the deviation. So standard deviation means the average distance away from the mean. So for example, there are four students sitting at the table. The age are as follow, 22, 19, 19, and 36. Now, how do we calculate the mean age of a student? So remember, how do we calculate the mean? Is we take all the value of the data, add them up, and then divide it by how the numbers of the data which is 4 in this case. Okay, so you can either use a calculator or I'm going to introduce a new way, which is use our um, as Google Sheet or Excel. So now let's put in the data. So data, we have 22, 19, 19, and 36. So, what are you going to do is, when you're trying to find the mean, first of all, we need to find the sum first. Or you can go straight to find the mean. Uh, let's do the sum first. So the sum is going to, what are you going to do is, you put the equal sign in here, and then you type in sum, they will have an embedding function on Google. And what you can do is you drag the data so we know that we're trying to calculate the sum from A2 to A5. Okay, so we found the sum. After we found the sum, how do we find the mean? So the mean is going to equal to the sum, which is 96, divided by 4. And then we show you that, hey, the mean is going to be 24. So now let's write down 24 in here. Also, there's another way to do it. So Excel also have embedding function. So let me show you. Instead of calculate by yourself, calculate the sum and the mean by yourself, you can just say mean, which is equal sign, put on average because mean means average. So you will see an average function. Again, we're including the data that we want to calculate average and hit return. See, we end up to get the same result. So again, there's two ways. First one is you calculate the sum, use the sum function from a cell to calculate the sum, and then you divide it by the number. Or you just straightforward use the mean function which is the average function to calculate the mean of the data set okay so what's the second step the second step is oh sorry find the deviation of the age to get the differences in age for each student compared to the mean that gives us idea of distance from the mean so what's that mean? So now we know that, hey, the average age of this group is 24. We want to find the distance. So 22, 19, 19, 36. This is data value. How do we calculate the mean? I mean, the devi deviation. So we subtract, we use each value of the data, subtract the mean. Okay, so we subtract 24, subtract 24. So from the date, first data is how far away from is negative 2 away from the mean, and then 19 years old is negative 5 away from the mean, and then 36 is 12 age away, 12 years away from the mean. So now let's try to do it on a cell sheet. Okay, 
So now we try to calculate the deviation. Okay, so what you can do is you can let the deviation equals to this data and then subtract our mean, which is 24. Okay, and then that will give you the answer. Oops, sorry. Subtract. You can write down 24 by yourself or just click on the data in here. And then they will show you the auto refill. They will suggest you auto refill, which is, or we can just do it by ourselves. Or you can jet this part in here. Then every group will just show you the A3 minus 24. A3 is this, 19 minus 24. And then this means A4, which is 19 minus 24, which is minus our mean. And this is 36 minus 24. Okay, so after we calculate our deviation, what do we do next? Let's take a look. Because the native distance doesn't exist, when we, so when we look at the squares of each distance, that means we need to square them. So we need to have negative 2 square and then negative 2 square. Oh, I'm sorry, negative 5 square. We need to find the squares of them. So now let's try to do it on a cell sheet. Square the deviation. Let's call it this one. Okay, so what you're going to do is equal to the deviation and then square. This means square sign. So you have a 4 and then they will auto fill that. Okay, so that means, look, 25 is what? The B3, which is the data here, negative 5, square. We got the deviation from here. And then this 25 also is come from B4, square. And then this part is what? Look, B5, square, which is our 12, square. Okay. So what's the next step? So the next step is average this square deviation. We add them up, but instead of dividing them by the sample size, we need to use the sample, mi sample size minus one. This is called the degree of freedom. The average is called variance. Okay, so now let's find the degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom equals to Sample size minus one. So look, our sample size is what? We totally have four data. So that means the sample size is four minus one. That means three. So they want you to add up all of this data, which is four, 25, 25, and 144. They want the sum of the square deviation after you sum them and then divide by the degree of freedom okay so now let's do it on a cell okay so now let's find the sum first so in here the sum of the square deviation so how do we do it so the sum is not hard, right? We can just let them have an equal and then find the sum. Remember our sum function? And then what? Yes, they already circled for you. It's from C5, C2 to C5 because we want to sum the deviation. Oh, sorry. Here to here. Okay, so that gives us 198, but that's not done. We still need to divide it by the degree of freedom. They call it variance. Variance. Equals 2. So now equals to this part, 198 divided by the degree of freedom. We just found that it's equal to 3, which is 66. Okay. 
Let's write down 66 in here. Okay. So we need to and we need to make up for the fact that we square our units. So we need to take square root. So the square root of variance is called is referred as standard deviation. It is the average distance from the mean with our data with that mean unit and on average it we differ from. Okay, it doesn't matter what that means. <laughs> um so basically standard deviation is you're trying to take the square root of deviation. Why we do that? Because do you remember we square everything? So that's why we need to take square root of the variance. I'm sorry. We take the square root of our variance. In this case, it's going to be square root of 66. Well, we can use a calculator and let's see if we can do it on a Excel sheet. I never did this before, so let me try it. Equals to square root. Oh, there is square root. That means positive square root of a positive number. Okay, so square root of 66. Okay, so we have a one point, we just run up to two decimal places. Okay, so from the previous Excel sheet, we know that the standard deviation is A.12. But I'm going to introduce another powerful tool. It's called GeoGebra, which is makes it easier. So now let's take a look. So GeoGebra is this website geogebra.org and then we click star calculator in here and then you will see a three dot in these places you click in here and then we try to find statistic statistic and then not just statistic we're trying to find standard deviation in our case would be what sample standard deviation which is this one sample sd short for deviation standard deviation we click in here and we are going to use the first function which is sample deviation is the list of the raw data okay so let's put in here so what's our data set we have the four students sit and their age is 22 19 19 and 36 so now look we end up to have the same result oops sorry which is 8.124 and remember we run up to two decimal places so that means it's 8.12 so this is really powerful so now let's do some recap so how do we find the deviation? First of all, we need to find the mean first. And then after mean, we use each data set to subtract the mean. And then we square the deviation of each deviation. Try to find the variance is we add up all of the square deviation and divide it by the degree of the freedom, which is the sample size minus one. And then from standard deviation is you take square root of it. So this is the notation of variance and the standard deviation. Remember, we use two tools to calculate that. One is the spreadsheet. The other one is GeoGebra. So most of the time, I would like you to show your work on your homework. But if you can just write down, hey, you use Excel and then just give me the answer, that's also fine. Or you tell me that you use the GeoGebra, that's fine. Okay, so here is they tell you to calculate the standard deviation for the following data set. So in this case, which one would you use? Definitely use GeoGebra, right? Because it's much easier. They have the embedded function. So now let's do this again. So let me start in at beginning from the GeoGebra. Okay, so when you go to the GeoGebra website, it's geogebra.org and then start calculator. 
Okay, and then click this three dot in the lower right side of the window, and then find statistic. After statistic, you scroll down until you find the standard, I mean the sample standard deviation. And we found the first equation and type in our data value, which is 3, 8, 12, 15, 18. Ta-da! We found our standard deviation, which is equal to 5.89. So let's write it here. I mean, if you want more practice, you definitely can use the Excel to do it. Then you will understand how do you get the standard deviation. Either way, I will take it, but you should enable it for me that, hey, I use GeoGebra. GeoGebra. Okay, so now let's next. So let data set A represent the number of people visiting the certain cafe of five random selected day. Describe the center and spread for the data. Data set given the data is symmetric. Okay, they give you really important information. The data is symmetric. That means when we try to describe the center and the spread from the previous class, I already told you that if it's a symmetric one, we're going to use the mean and the standard deviation. Let's do some review there. But if the data is skew, what do we use? We will use medium and interquarter range, which is we're going to talk about that in the next classes. Okay, so now let's focus. So from the data from the previous data set, from the previous problem. This is the number of people visiting the cafe on five random day. So we just found out that hey, the standard deviation, also the symbol is like this one, equals to 5.89. Since we're talking about people, you can't have 5.89 people. You can round up to a whole number. I know most of the case we talk about that hey, you want to round up to decimal places, but you need to have some little bit common sense. In here, we run up to two, six. Since we're talking about people, when we're doing the first questions, first problem, we didn't know this is talking about people. So it's okay, you keep it 5.89. But when it comes to this example, we already specifically told you that, hey, this is the number of people visiting. So you want to keep it a whole number. Okay, so we haven't calculated the mean yet. So how do we calculate the mean? Again, we can use the Excel sheet to calculate the mean. Let's do some review in here. Let's do it together. Cell. So again, we have how many data set in here? Um, we have 3, 8, 12, 15, and 18. So the mean should equals to, remember what would be the function? Should be the average function, right? So average, we have 11.2 people visit the cafe every day. Again, we need to run up to the whole number. We can have 11.2 people to visit the cafe. Okay. So the mean equals to 11. Also, you need to know how do you get that. We use, we add up all of the value of the data and then divide it by the sample size. So we have 11. Okay, so what's that mean? So that means when you try to describe the data, you can say, hey, on average, there are 11 people to visit the cafe, given or take five, six people. Okay, so that's it for today. See you next time. If you have any question, let me know.